Teacher, I pray for Jesus' sake. And God's people said, Amen. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. And I welcome all of you, and you pastors. We're all hungry, deeply and greatly hungry, for the things of the Spirit. Ephesians 6.18, a familiar portion to all of us, declares, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Notice the overwhelming force of this verse. Notice the all. As Paul writes under the anointing, he says, praying always, not sometimes, with all prayer, praying always with all supplication, praying always in the Spirit, Praying always, watching thereunto with all perseverance, and praying always for all saints. Now, this is a very powerful verse because he talks about prayer, supplication, and perseverance, and the very strong expression that he uses being watchful. This is a very wealthy verse when it comes to prayer. And being watchful means do not be lazy. Paul understood the weakness of men. And Paul understood the natural, the natural neglect of prayer because prayer is work. And knowing that prayer is work, he says, do not be lazy, be watchful. We must not allow laziness to set in because if laziness sets in, it will destroy the effectiveness of our prayer life. Now, notice also the, the, the very uh, powerful way he, he presents the constant prayer. For he says this, Watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, watching, be constant, be persistent, be sleepless, do not sleep, you must overcome. Now, why? Why is he so forceful in this portion of Scripture? As we see in all portions of Scripture where God speaks about this very important matter, God is forceful in it. Why? Because there's a devil. And because this devil is cunning... This devil is mighty and continually plotting your destruction. Now, when it comes to prayer, understand one thing about it. It's by the Spirit. You cannot pray effectively in the flesh. That's why Paul said, all prayer, all supplication, all perseverance in the Spirit not in the flesh. When there is that type of prayer in your life, you will not relax. You will not be lazy because when you're in the spirit, laziness is non-existent. Only the flesh gets lazy. 
But Paul the Apostle also warns us. He says, be watchful. Don't be lazy. Don't let the flesh get in there. Prayer occupied a very important place in Paul's life. Uh, in, in Ephesians 6, look just one minute again at verse 12, if you will. He says, we have an enemy. We have a, a very mighty, deadly enemy. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. He gives us here the five divisions of Satan's very organized army. He says, one, we fight demons, not flesh and blood. Two, he says, we also fight against principalities. These are chief rulers of the highest kind. These are the princes that control nations. Three, he said, we also fight against powers, against sergeants, these that carry the orders of the principalities. They are the ones that execute the, the, the authority and the will of the principalities. And then he says we also fight against rulers of the darkness of this world. We're fighting men. Men who are possessed by evil spirits. And then we're also fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places. These are heavenly wicked angels that fight us. Wicked powers that oppose us. Now please know, and I am not saying this to frighten you or to impress you. The more you do for God, the more the devil will fight you. And the more you operate in the supernatural, the more he will be real to you. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Are you listening to me? That's why Paul is so powerful with all prayer, all supplication, all perseverance, all saints in the spirit. He said, don't you dare pray in the flesh because there's a devil out there planning your downfall, planning your defeat and destruction. That's why he said it's imperative that prayer be always. Say always. always. Now, even Jesus understood that. The words prayer and prayer are found at least 25 times in connection to the Lord's life. At least 25 times. Therefore, if Christ Jesus prayed, and prayed continually, a man or a woman who does not spend much time in prayer cannot be properly called a follower of Jesus Christ. I want to say it again. If you look at his life, his life was a life of prayer. Therefore, you cannot be called a follower of Christ if you're not praying just like he did. He said, follow me. Follow my example. The Bible says he prayed all the time. Prayer, in fact, is still his ministry. He ever liveth to make intercession. Hebrews 7, 25 says. Now that's a very puzzling part of the Bible too. Why is Jesus still praying? And may I add, why will he pray forever? He is my high priest today. I have asked myself the question, well, why do, why do I need one if I am saved? To stay saved. More than that. That also tells me we do not understand God's holiness. I think we are, we are so far from 
God in our human ways and understanding of God, we do not understand what holiness really is. You must understand that holiness, I want to say this very carefully. There's two sides to it. On one side, holiness will revive those that are living in the light. On the other side, holiness will judge those who are not. As he is in the light, the scripture says, walk in the light. What does it mean? Live in the light. What does it mean? You are light in the Lord. What does it mean? All right, look at me. I'll explain. Before you came into this room, the lights were off. It was dark here sometimes this morning. And somebody turned the switch on. Turned the lights on. The minute the lights were turned on, the light expelled darkness. Darkness was judged when the light came on. Darkness was expelled when the light came on. In the presence of God, who is light, darkness is judged. Therefore, whatsoever is not light will be destroyed in the presence of God. His very holiness will judge what is not holy. So if we approach the presence of God as sinners, we're dead on the spot. We'll vanish out of sight in a second. We will be judged, expelled, destroyed forever. Why? Because His presence is too holy to allow anything sinful. That's why the blood must be applied. Look at me, please. God is too holy to look upon men. He cannot. The scripture says, his, his eyes are too pure to behold sin. Thou art of purer eyes than to behold iniquity. Hosea wrote. So God is too holy to look at you and me. We must come through Christ Jesus. He is our cover. He is our covering. His perfect work is our protection. When we are hid in Christ, we live. If ever we're out of Christ, we die. He's too holy to allow sinful men into His presence. Now, forever, Christ intercedes for us. Why? I think one of these days we will fully comprehend this, but we must understand He's God and He's holy. His holiness is indescribable and eternal. And yet that holiness we will never fully understand. I shouldn't say never. We will not understand till we see Him face to face. And when we do, we will understand. And understand also beyond that why Christ Jesus will forever be our priest, high priest. Prayer is so important to him that the Bible says it is that ministry that keeps us. Do you know if Christ Jesus is not praying for you now, we will all perish? Our salvation will not hold. We are kept by the power of God. Say it. Say it again. Because you see, we're surrounded by evil forces. You are hiding in Him. You are hid in Christ Jesus. His ministry of prayer is your protection. Today and forever. You see, forever, we will continue to have choice. Free will will not be taken away from us. Therefore, His ministry of prayer will keep you forever. That should, that should settle down on you like a heavy cloud of glory. 
we are neglecting the breath that's keeping us breathing. Would you do this? Every time you pray, you do. In the Spirit. Every time you pray, you take a breath. What would you do to you physically if you did that yourself? What would, what would happen to your body if you quit breathing right now? If, 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 if you took your hand and put it on top of your nose and mouth for about one minute, what happened to you? You know what happened to you. People of God, the people who do not pray are choking their spiritual life. They are killing themselves. They are holding their breath. They are, they are placing their, their hand over their nose and mouth. People that do not pray are not breathing. Are you breathing right now? In the natural, right? What would happen if you were not breathing right now? You'd die. Well, I'm just saving your life right now. Every time you pray, you take a breath. Say it. And what comes out after prayer? Praise. You take in prayer and you release praise. So it's all the same. We inhale prayer and exhale praise. Therefore, the people who are not praising are not praying because praise is the result of prayer. Oh, you missed what I said. Okay, let's all do it. Come on, in the natural. Come on. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale is prayer. Exhale is what? If you're not praising, you're not praying. So the people who really pray are the only ones praising. So praise is not the result of decision. Praise is the result of breath. The breath of God coming into you through prayer. You take a breath, that's prayer. <laughs> Exhale, that's praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and just bless Him right now, people. Now, say this after me. Prayer, prayer is, the is the key to my growth. To my say it again. Yeah, your spiritual growth is dependent on one thing, prayer. Prayer is the key to your spiritual growth, no different than breath to your body. What a wonderful Lord we serve. He's the one who said, call unto me and I will answer thee. And I will show thee great and 